Today we are reading chapter two of Romeo and Julio. Chapter two, Romeo's journal. My name is Romeo Renee Capel. I am brown like the earth, tall and slim like a poplar tree, and outspoken like the wind on a stormy day. I like mornings because of all the possibilities and rainbows when I can find them. I am 16 years old and I'll be driving by the end of the year. I like chili, macadamia nut cookies, and environmentally safe products. I believe recycling is essential for the future of this planet, so I never throw anything away. In my room, I have collections of buttons, pop tops, foil, and safety pins. I like to talk on the phone in the dark because it adds mystery and conserves energy. I hate picky people, watermelon, and chocolate. I hate gangs, violence, and movies with too much sex and cussing. There are gangs in our school now, and it's a little scary because they want to control with threats and punches the actions and thinking of kids, and I can't be bothered with that, so they don't like me much. That's fine with me. I don't need any more complications in my life. It's complicated enough trying to juggle geometry, boys, and learning to drive. I'm not afraid of much. Lots of girls see spiders and snakes and scream. I think snakes are sleek and sexy. Not that I'd want to marry one or anything, but I like snakes because they're smooth and cool, and spiders because they create art out of their own bodies. That's awesome. Most spiders don't bite, and if I see one, I go around it rather than step on it. Life is rough enough for a spider without looking out for girls with big shoes. And I do love big shoes. The bigger the better. Three inch heels and soles. Four inches. Five. My mother said she wore shoes just like those when she was my age. I find that hard to believe. The only other things I'm afraid of are being abandoned, thunderstorms, and water. I'm terrified of water. I took swimming when I was little like everyone else, but I never learned. That's not exactly true. I learned how to swim. I just never got the nerve to let go. I know how to do rhythmic breathing, proper arm strokes, the flutter kick, all of that, but I just can't get away from the side of the pool. When I'm in the middle with nothing to hold on to, I panic. There's just nothing solid, nothing to grasp. The water slips through my hands and I flounder, and then I start to sink. Then I scream. Then, of course, I get embarrassed. So I go to the pool, but I stay on the side or splash with the little kids in the shallow end so their parents can go swim in the deep water. Even walking by the deep end makes me feel ill, but I've never fallen in, never had a near drowning incident, never even slipped in the bathtub, which is why that dream freaks me out. I'm going to have to ask my dad. He would tell me what to do without getting too worried about it. My daddy, Cornell Capel, is a television newscaster. He's good looking and popular, and his picture is on billboards all over the city. I like that. He gets to interview all the stars and dignitaries that come to town. I got to meet Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan last year because of my dad's job. His show comes on every night at six o'clock with this really goofy lady named Nanette Norris. She's pretty, but she can't read very well and keeps mispronouncing words and making stupid mistakes on the air. She once spent the whole show talking about the gorillas in some war in Europe. My dad just smiled and explained to the listening audience that the gorilla, not gorilla, warfare was making the war so intense. My daddy's folk come from New Orleans, and we visit every summer with my grandmama and Essie and my grandpapa Rudolph. Essie makes the best red beans and rice this side of the Mississippi River, and Rudolph tells me tall tales of ghosts and voodoo and stuff my daddy did when he was little. I bet grandpapa Rudolph would know why I'm having scary dreams about drowning. Grandmama would say it was something I ate or growing pains, but grandpapa would light a candle and whisper a tale of a drowned sailor woman, and I wouldn't sleep for a week. He'd laugh about it later, but then he'd wink at me, and I could never be sure when he was joking or when he really believed what he said. My mother's name is Lady. I think black folk have the most creative names for their children. We don't bother with ordinary names like Sandy and Mary. We like, flam we like flamboyant names like Lashandra and La Marietta or Queenessa or Apollonia. Each name is distinct and descriptive. Anyway, my mama, Lady Brianna Capel, is from Cincinnati, where I grew up. Her parents are strict, church-going, hymn-singing college teachers who taught me to love music and reading and God. They named their only daughter Lady because that is what they expected her to grow up to be, not a woman, but a lady. And she is. She is six feet tall with very short dark hair, dark skin, and a figure better than mine, and I'm 16 and supposedly at the prime of my life. She was a model when she was younger. She walks like an African queen. Grandpapa told me that we are direct descendants of African kings, and when I see my mama walk, I believe him. She never frowns, never yells, and never loses her cool like I do all the time. Once we were shopping, and the sales lady started to wait on these teenagers who had come in at least 20 minutes after us. Mama didn't raise a fuss. 
She said quietly with that powerful musical voice of hers, excuse me, madam, but the reports of my invisibility have been greatly exaggerated. I'm sure you never intended to overlook my six foot body and the hundred dollars worth of merchandise I'm holding in my hand. The lady mumbled apologies. Mama smiled sweetly and we walked out of there like royalty. My mother owns a boutique downtown. She sells African artifacts and cloth and imported items from all over the world. She also carries prints from black artists and lots of books for children and adults by black writers. Anybody who wants a unique outfit or some authentic African artwork, they know to come to Lady Brianna's boutique. I work there three days a week after school and most Saturdays. It's not like a job to me because I love being there. I've read all the latest books and I've got some really sharp outfits that my friends all admire. People from all over the world come to Mama's shop. Her shop is right between two large hotels, so we love tourists. A couple of times, we've even had visiting kings and presidents of African countries come in. She, the queenly person that she is, was simply charming to them. They appreciated her style and bought lots of stuff. I like being connected to royalty. I'm tall like my mom, but not tall enough to have that queenly walk. She says it will come later, but I don't know. I may be doomed to walk like a jock all my life. I tried modeling for a while, but I felt stupid grinning when I wasn't happy and walking when I'd rather be sitting down. Last year, I played basketball on a team of girls from my neighborhood. We could beat most of the boys we know, but the boys would never admit it. I don't have a boyfriend and I don't want one. Boys are smelly, noisy, and confusing. They call you and tell you that they like you. Then they don't call back. They like to act macho and don't like a girl who is smarter or tougher than they are. I'd like to find a guy who could talk to me about more than the latest singing group or the scores of last night's game. I want a boy who wonders about life on other planets or if there ever was a continent called Atlantis. I'd like to be able to talk to him about adopting children or the World Wide Web or whether there's a heaven and a hell. I want a boy I could tell my dreams to and he wouldn't laugh. He'd understand my fear. I want a boy who would go see a play or a ballet, not just a hockey game or a car show. I believe a relationship should be well balanced, but boys who are smart, good looking thinkers, if they go to my school, they're hiding from me. I don't think I look too bad, but nobody has seemed to notice yet. I have soft brown skin, dark brown hair, and light brown eyes like my dad. My favorite color is orange because I think I look good in it. I've got a big smile and even white teeth that my dad paid a whole lot of money for when I got my braces at 12. I like school and make good grades most of the time. I have a computer, which really helps my homework look good, and I have friends who I talk to regularly on the internet. My parents love me, my friends think I'm okay, and I like myself most of the time. Just as Romeette closed her journal, the alarm clock sliced the silence. It was 6 a.m. and time to get up for school. All of a sudden, she was really sleepy and sorry she had missed two hours of sleep. She sighed, glanced at her pillow, put the journal away under her mattress, and headed to the bathroom for a shower.